Today we're going to be taking a look inside of the Honda H Series engine. Now the H Series engine from Honda represented one of their more performance oriented inline 4 cylinder engines. This one being out of a Honda Prelude. These engines were made in the early 90s to early 2000s. Now these engines were pretty powerful for their time producing almost 100 horsepower per liter. So we're going to take a look inside of this engine to see how it works. We're also going to take a look at some of the failure points where Honda could have improved on to make this good engine even better. Now taking a look around this engine here, this is the H23 model being a 2.3 liter engine it is driven off by a timing belt which you can see the covers already broken off and the engine mount is broken now I'm told the engine does work it's just that it was in an accident and that kind of broke off now what's interesting is that the timing side of the engine is actually on the driver side of the vehicle most conventional vehicles nowadays have the timing belt side on the passenger side of the vehicle to accommodate for the steering and braking side on the driver side. Now this engine is a blacktop version, it's got the VTEC head here. Some of these did not come with VTEC. You've got your coolant jackets and your coolant hookups over here on the bell housing side as well as the VTEC solenoid. Now looking around the back which will be facing the firewall, this is your intake ports over here. You've got the water pump from the timing belt that's going to drive a cross pipe over here to come over to your cooling side of the engine and then the oil filter. All right, we're going to start this tear down by removing the already loose valve cover. Now taking a look under the valve cover here, you can see we do have our intake camshaft and your exhaust camshaft. Now they both have variable valve timing with the electronic control or VTEC as Honda calls it. Now one thing I do like about this engine, it's kind of overbuilt. Most engines just have a little semicircle that covers the cam bearing here with just two bolts that holds the bearing down. Now not only has Honda gone to the extent of extending it over to the other side here, but they've also to put in this really long support that runs along the engine here to make sure those camshafts stay inside the engine when VTEC kicks in yo. Also at the back of the engine here you can see the VTEC solenoid but that's basically going to redirect oil from the oil galleys inside of here out to the camshafts themselves to activate VTEC. Now I do have a detailed video on how VTEC works so you might want to check the link above to check it out. Now I'm going to remove all these 12 millimeter bolts that hold this camshaft brace on. All right, now we'll pop off these cam braces here. Just remove these cam caps here. Now usually the bearing surfaces and the cam lobes themselves are nice and shiny, but it seems like Honda's coated them in some oxide-like material instead of being machine polished. Now we'll be able to take off the camshafts properly with the timing belt in the way, so we're gonna move over to the timing side next. Now most of the carnage is actually on this timing belt side here, probably where the vehicle had an accident the frame moved and that's what stripped out these bolts from the engine block and the head itself. We're going to start by removing the crankshaft bolt here. Remove the harmonic balancer. Remove the camshaft bolts. Now let's go around and remove all the timing cover bolts. Here we are. Then I can take off this engine mount and you can see that these bolts are stripped out and bent completely. That means the block here is actually damaged, as I can see here. And here's a closer look at that carnage. It looks like the head itself is okay, but the block itself is pretty much junk because you can't mount it to any engine mounts. Now the timing belt set up on this H-Series engine is actually kind of unique. You've got your crankshaft here, you've got a timing belt which drives the camshafts up at the top here. It'll then come back around here to drive the water pump, then around this tensioner here and then back down to the crankshaft. Now the second timing belt sits in front of the existing cam belt. That's going to come around the balance shaft on this side, the crankshaft down here, and then over to the balance shaft over on this side. Now what's cool is the timing belt uses both this same tensioner located inside of this piston here. Now this was one of the weak spots on these engines because once these tensioners fail and lose tension your engine jumps timing. And here you kind of get an idea of how the engine all turns together with the water pump here and the tensioner over here as well as the balance shaft. Now I'm going to start to remove all the bolts for this timing setup here. This one here was already loose. I'm going to knock this 14 loose here. And I can remove the tensioner here. Then I can remove the front timing belt here. Yep. Then next remove this 14. And just inside of there you can see the chunk that came off of the engine over here. Alright, a couple more bolts to take off this crank position sensor. Oh, looks like that got damaged too. So it's actually got two sensors here that sit on either side of this timing gear. Let me just try to pry off this timing gear here. <coughs> next I'm going to remove this tensioner here. And take it off. Take out this dipstick. Now I can pull off the cam gears here. Alright, next I'm going to remove the balance shaft assembly here. Got the oil pump assembly out here. And the balance shaft is inside of this part. Now I'm going to remove this 12 for the balance. 
Okay, I wonder if this pliers is gonna work. Can't seem to get this out. All right, next up we're gonna work on the water pump. See, one of the things about these engines is that the water pump is all the way driven by the timing belt. So that means you gotta get this far inside of the engine just to change the faulty water pump, or you change it when you're doing your timing belt service. And that's what the water pump looks like. Next I'm gonna remove these 10 millimeter bolts that hold this entire bottom assembly here, which forms the oil pump. Now this does have an inner timing cover here, so I just gotta remove this engine bracket bolt here. And I can pop that off. Now with all the timing components removed, next we remove all the 14 millimeter bolts that hold these accessory brackets on. These are for your alternator and AC compressor. Interesting how they made this one out of steel and this one out of aluminum. Now one thing I personally find interesting is the use of washers on this engine. You don't usually find that in more modern engines, and that's just to reduce the amount of parts you have during production. If you gotta have such a big flange, they'll just make it part of the bolt itself, as opposed to having a separate piece that could be easily neglected. Now before I remove the head from the block, I need to remove this coolant passage on the side here, as well as this thermostat assembly. Now this coolant hose assembly here comes from the water pump which is going to bring in water into the engine block over on this side. However there is a line that tees off of it here to cool the oil. You can see this part here is the oil cooler and you got the oil filter. Now this part of the hose is going to lead back up to the engine but it's got to go through the thermostat which you can see inside of this housing here. I'm just trying to remove the clamps here. The water pump assembly. Got another hose assembly over here. Over here. Just remove this oil filter with my oil filter removal tool. No oil. I love it. So this is a 30 millimeter axle nut socket. Remove this fitting over here and the oil cooler. So how this works is you've got oil that goes inside here from this side over here and then around it there's a coolant jacket that comes from the coolant pipe to cool it off. And I do have another video on how the cooling system works in your engine so make sure you check that out linked above. Next up I'm going to remove the VTEC solenoid assembly here. That's what it looks like. Now these VTEC gaskets, just like in newer K-series, could also be a problem spot. And you can see that the back half of this engine here is completely covered in oil, either due to a leaking valve cover or these gaskets. Now this is just a solenoid that's going to redirect oil through this passage over here and send it through to the intake and exhaust camshafts in order to activate the VTEC. Now this is just a bypass, but it also has a screen inside of here. And check out how dirty that screen is inside of here. There's so much stuff clogged up in here. So despite even having an oil filter, even this screen could get clogged. Now just as a refresher on how VTEC works, you've got the oil that's going to flow from the VTEC solenoid through this shaft over here which houses the rocker arms. Now there is a return spring down over here which is what's going to give this a little bit of spring back. Now when oil is sent through that shaft it's going to activate this little pin over here which is going to pop out and that's going to also pop this spring out and join this together so now this all becomes one single unit and moves all together with the larger cam shaft profile over here. Now the H23 uses a performance version of VTEC, which means that you've got VTEC with a larger cam profile for performance and the smaller cam profile for economy, unlike the K-series which uses only one profile and the second profile is basically flat for economy. Now by opening up the valves a lot larger using a larger cam profile, you can get better power because you're allowing more air to go in and on the exhaust side more air to go out into the engine and of course you've got to adjust your fuel ratio accordingly. All right, we're going to move the head bolts next. This is a 14 millimeter 12 point socket. I'm going to zip off these head bolts. Now I'm going to lift off the head. Now on top of the cylinders, there's a lot of this black crust that's built up here. So I'm thinking this engine was burning a lot of oil at some point. So that's probably what caused a lot of these carbon deposits to build up like this. Now one of the cool things about the Honda H-Series engines for its time was this is an aluminum block and there's actually no steel liners inside like a typical engine would have. In fact, they just used an FRM coating inside of here and just coated the walls. So that's actually a good thing because it increases heat transfer between the combustion chamber and the cooling jacket that's sitting around it. But it's also a bad thing because at some point these do wear out and that's the biggest problem with these engines. It causes them to burn oil. Also makes it a little bit more challenging because you can't typically just bore these out or remachine them as easily. You have to account for the thickness of the sleeve you got to put in or recoat them. Now this being a later model H23 engine, it has an open deck design, which means that all inside of here the coolant jacket is continuous and flows. The earlier H22s from the early 90s had a semi-closed design where there were some supports built in between the coolant jackets over here to make it a little bit stronger. All right, so I got my brother's old sweatpants here ready. I'm going to turn the engine over so we can work on the bottom. 
course it's gonna piss coolant everywhere. Ugh. Always. Now one of the good things is they use an aluminum oil pan instead of a steel stamped one. So I'm gonna remove all the 10 millimeter bolts and go around it so we can pop it off. A little bit sludgy inside of here. Now underneath the H series Honda engine you can see that we've got this oil baffle here to prevent oil from splashing around. We've also got the oil pickup tube over here that's going to bring oil down into the oil pump. I'm going to remove all these tens here that hold the pickup tube and the splash guard on. It's amazing how engines from the 90s still use metal parts. Nowadays engines are all using plastic pickup tubes. Now the whole front half of the engine here comes apart as an assembly. This is actually part of the oil pump which is driven off of the crankshaft over here. And it looks like the balance shaft from the front side is actually coming apart with it. And here's a closer look at the rotating balance shaft assembly. And you can see that most of the weight here sits above the center line here to give it its offsetted balance shaft characteristic. Now taking a look at the bottom end of this engine, you can see this is what makes this engine so strong. It's got this ladder frame that's built up on the bottom here. And not only is the ladder frame reinforcing the main bearing bolts that hold the crankshaft together, but there are also oil galleys that are running between them. So instead of boring holes in the engine block, You've also got these oil galleys that are sharing oil across different parts of the engine to lubricate each bearing and also bring oil from the front half of the engine out to the back half of the engine and then down to the head. So now I'm going to remove these 14 millimeter main bearing bolts. And I can remove this bearing and oil galley assembly. The rear main seal bolts onto the block so it's always a good idea to remove those bolts and the flywheel before you mount it to the engine stand. Now this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen on any Japanese engine. The use of a 13 millimeter socket to remove the connecting rod caps. I'm remove these connecting rod caps here. Now oh, these look in good condition. So I guess this engine had fairly good health after all. A little bit of the coating missing but uh, not too scored up. Now I'm going to remove the crankshaft from the engine. <coughs> And here's what the pistons look like. Now you can see that they're actually kind of large, but this is a largish four cylinder at 2.3 liters. You've also got a fairly long piston skirt compared to say more modern engines. And now that we've taken everything apart, we're gonna have a closer look at some of these components to see how they work. Now taking a look at the lubrication system on the H23 engine, it starts here at the pickup tube, which is gonna draw oil into this oil pump and that's driven off of the crank shaft. That's then gonna send oil through this passage out to the engine block. Now that oil pump is going to send oil down this oil galley from the front of the engine across the side over here to the oil filter and cooler assembly where it's going to get filtered out. It'll then pass through the oil pressure switch and then over to this hole over here to feed the ladder frame assembly. Now at the bottom of the ladder frame assembly here we've got this hole which is going to draw oil into this entire assembly over here to fill all these galleys up with oil. Now you can see inside of here the oil galleys are also going to feed the main bearings and hence the crankshaft as well as the connecting rod bearings. That's why there's no oil galleys inside of the engine block itself. Everything is all smooth. It's all fed by the galleys from the ladder below. Now in addition, the oil galleys also have to feed the bearings for the balance shafts on either side. Speaking of balance shafts, here you can see the balance shaft installed here and how it's going to rotate. It's basically a semi-circular weight here that's going to rotate to counter the secondary moment of inertia generated by typical four-cylinder engines to make it a little smoother. Now from the oil filter, the galley is also split off to feed the engine head as well as lubricate the camshafts, rocker arms, and the VTEC system. Inside the block you can also see we've got these oil sprayers that are going to spray and line the cylinder walls with oil to aid with a little bit of cooling as well as lubrication. Now taking a look at the pistons themselves, they are pretty girthy and they've got a lot of weight to them compared to say a lot of modern engines which gives me the impression that they can take a lot of power. Looking at the rings here, you do have your two compression rings as well as your oil control ring. And in this case, it's actually pretty clean. There's not a lot of oil built up inside of there, despite there being so much crust on the top of this piston head. The connecting rod itself also feels pretty heavy and girthy. Now in comparison, here is a Hyundai Theta 2 engine that I took apart in the last video. And you can see that its piston skirts are a lot smaller. This is a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine, while this is the 2.3 H23. The strokes are almost the same in terms of length, but you can see that this connecting rod is a lot thinner and overall the weight is a lot lighter 
than this engine over here. So I will have a feeling that the Honda will definitely take more power than say a Hyundai. Now looking underneath the head here, you can see that we've got our gasket. The surface looks nice and clean actually. Now I do notice that the spark plugs have this white crust on them. So I'm gonna assume that this engine was burning a little bit of oil. Now over here you can see the feed for the oil that's gonna lubricate the head. Now this engine actually has one VTEC solenoid for both the intake and the camshaft. So you've only got one extra setting here. Now you can see this bolt here is going to hide a galley that goes inside of here that's going to share some of the oil activated by VTEC from this side with the intake and the exhaust side and that's going to feed the rocker arm assembly to feed the VTEC system. Now as you can tell from the condition of this engine a lot of Hondas love to leak oil and the H23 is no exception. As you can see the whole back half of the engine here is completely coated in oil and that could just be due to worn valve cover gaskets or a VTEC gasket. Now because this engine does have a VTEC system it is going to be very oil sensitive so you want to make sure that you've got enough oil in there to create enough oil pressure to activate all of these rocker arms and keep things well lubricated. Now it's been a little while since I tore down an engine with a metal valve cover but the H23 does have a metal one this one being the quote-unquote black top engine because it's been powder coated black with the VTEC head on it now this is actually a good thing because it's nice and solid and strong but it does add considerable weight especially being that this valve cover isn't part of the structure of anything to do with the engine head a lot of new engines even Honda ones have moved over to plastic valve covers which can be controversial due to heat cycling causing it to leak and warp and overall I think Honda's done a good job with adding things like these braces over the camshafts as well as the crankshaft to make a very strong engine design that can take a lot of power however there are some gripes with this engine such as those cylinder liners as well as the fact that it still has a timing belt which makes the k-series a good successor to this engine and that's an in-depth look inside of the honda h-series engines make sure you follow me on instagram to find out what the next engine teardown is going to be and subscribe for more videos just like this one